The Rebbe starts off the Sikha by saying, we know that there's a Minig Yisroel, a custom, to take a couple, like a man or, and wife, or boy and girl, for a kvater to bring the baby to the bris. So first the woman uh, holds the baby, brings him to the doorway of the shul, and the man takes the baby and brings him to the place of the bris. Says the Rebbe, since we know that Minig Yisroel toirahu, that a Minig Yisroel is toira, Says the Rebbe, the fact that a woman has some sort of part in the bris, although of course the obligation is not on the woman or on the mother to give a bris, it's on the father, but nevertheless the fact that she is taking some part in the bris, says the Rebbe, we could say that there is a support for this or a remis for this in our Parsha. The Parsha starts off with Isha Kisa Azriya, it's the dinim of a woman who had conceived and given birth to a boy. The Pasuk says, Uba Yoy Mashmini on the eighth day, He'll have a bris. It continues speaking about the laws of the Yoledes, the laws of the woman that had given birth. The whole parsha, this whole section is all speaking about the woman that has given birth. In fact, the father, the man, is not even mentioned at all. And says the Rebbe, here we have the hint of this idea that when we're speaking about the bris miller, the woman also has some sort of connection to the idea of a bris. And practically, how is it expressed? Through the fact that she becomes the kvater in the one bringing the baby to the bris. In order to explain this further, the Rebbe says, we know that in a number of places there's a minig that a pregnant woman shouldn't actually be the kvater and shouldn't be the one bringing the baby to the bris. And this too is a minig Yisrael and therefore Torah. How do we understand this? What's the significance of this idea that the pregnant woman does not become the kvatrin? And how is this related to the whole idea of what a bris is really all about? Says the Rebbe, in order to explain this, the Rebbe first looks at what happens by a chuppah, by a marriage. That here too we have a similar sort of idea. We There we also have the concept called shushvin and the unterfir, the people leading the chasen and kala to the chuppah. Here there is also a married couple specifically is the one that leads them. And here we also have this meaning that a pregnant woman that is brought in many places shouldn't be the unterfir. In Sfarim it says that these two minhagim are actually connected to the fact that the kvater is not a pregnant woman as well as the unterfir. From this we'll understand that there must be the same reason, it's one of the same reason for both minhagim. Says the Rebbe, we can explain this in a very, very simple way. By first looking at another minug, the minug by Kaporos. And there we know that a pregnant woman, the minug is that she takes a chicken, she takes a kapora, not only for herself, but also for the fetus, for the unborn child. With this, within this itself, there's also various minugim, how many she takes, but the point is that she's taking one also for the unborn child. And based on this, we're going to understand the concept of what the pregnant woman means by the unterfeer as well as by the kvater. That is, just like by kaporus, we are, she, the woman is taking something separate for herself and for the baby. In other words, in this case, they are considered two pay people, the mother and the baby. Says Rebbe, from this we can now understand regarding the kvater and the unterfeer. The kvater, we need to have two people that are the kvaters. There's a man and a woman, or a boy and a girl. There's two people needed. But if there's a pregnant woman, and if the pregnant woman is considered something, in a, in the child, the fetus, is considered something additional to the pregnant woman, so now there's suddenly three people that are the kvaterin. Or the same thing by the unterfeer. If we go by two couples a husband and wife, or two husbands and two wives, together with a child, there will now we want be one more person that's the unterfeer. Furthermore, the Rebbe says it's actually not going to be an equal number of males and females, depending, of course, on what the child is. And this is the reason why we don't take a pregnant woman so as not to have an additional person as either the kvater or the unterfeer. Now, the Rebbe asks a simple question, or is preempting a simple question. Seemingly... Who cares whether there's an extra person over here as the kvaterin or the unterfir? By the chuppah, for example, there are other people under the chuppah as well. And that's not considered a problem. So why are we suddenly saying there's a problem that there's an extra unterfir? But the Rebbe says there's a very obvious difference. These other people are not there for the sake of being unterfir. They're not there as part of the unterfir. They're just there. They're observing the chuppah. Whereas this feed is this unborn child, which is part of its mother, so automatically if the mother is the interfere or the kvaterin, 
then this baby is also an interferer or a quaternion, and that's what we are saying wouldn't be okay to have this extra person. But the Rebbe takes it a step further. The Rebbe says it's not the pshat, that is the child that's like a new existence over here, or a new metzius, or a new person that's the kvater or the unterfer. Because if that would be the case, going back to the, to the case of kaporus, why is it that the baby needs a kapora? It's not that the mother is taking the extra chicken because the baby needs a kapora. Rather, the pshat is that the woman herself is now like an extra person. She herself is like two people because she also has, she's also the Matthias, she also has the Matthias of the child. In other words, it's not that the child needs the kapara, but it's as if the mother now needs an extra kapara. So for example, if the mother ate something, why does she need a kapara? Let's say she ate something that wasn't allowed, so it became part of her, but it also became part of the baby. But who's the one that needs the kapara? She is the one that needs the kapara for herself and for this extra part of herself, which is the baby. And therefore, applying this again by the kvater or the unterfeer, it's not as if there's her and the baby, the baby being a kvater or the unterfeer, but rather she herself became now like an extra person. Says the Rebbe, we still, still need clarification. Why, in fact, do we need a man and a woman to be the kvater? And the Rebbe says, by the unterfeer, we can understand. We have a chosen and a kala, and therefore we also have two unterfeers, a man and a woman, or two men and two women. In, but the question is, why by a kvater for this baby that's having the bris, why over here do we need a man and a woman? In order to explain this, the Rebbe says, let's have a more careful look at the idea of the unterfeers by the chuppah. What's the simple idea of why we need these unterfeers? Until now, you had this chosen and the kala that were two foreigners to each other. And now there is coming to a situation where they're going to become close and very close to each other. There's a certain feeling of shame, of holding back between these two strangers that need to come closer together. So we take a couple that's already married, that's gone through this process already of marriage, and they are coming to encourage and to bring the chosen and kala closer to each other. Says the Rebbe, this idea, begashmias, is really rooted like all things beruchni yisoyen we know Baruchni is there's also the marriage of Bnei Yisrael with HaKadosh Baruch Hu that all started off by Matan Torah. And there too there was the Unterfeers. It says that Moshe Rabbeinu is considered Shashvina the Malka, the Unterfeer of the Chosan of the Melech of Hashem, which means practically to say that he is the one drawing the Chosan, drawing Hashem, drawing godliness closer to the world. And we have Aaron who is called Shashvina the Matronisa, the Unterfeer of the Queen of the Bnei Yisrael, meaning that he is elevating the Bnei Yisrael, the Kala, to come closer to Hashem. Says the Rebbe, this is also the reason why the Shashvinim are also very much connected with the tremendous Simcha that happens by the Chasana. Because where does Simcha come from? When there's a novel idea, when there's a novelty, something new happening. And that's what's happening by a Chasana. We had this Isha and Isha, the man and woman that were separate from each other. In many places it says they originally they were like each a half a body, but they were separated. A half and a shaman, and now they're coming together. And that brings tremendous joy, tremendous simcha. And so to Baruchni Yisrael Yonim. You had an Ashama that Uplamayla originally was connected to Hashem, but down here below it feels separated, it feels removed. And now it's becoming reunited with Hashem. This causes a tremendous, tremendous simcha. And that's what Matan Torah is all about. Matan Torah is about the union that's happening between Hashem and Bnei Yisrael. And that's why it's called Yom Simchas Libri, the day of the rejoicing of his heart. Because before Matan Torah, we know there was that split, that separation between the higher realms, between Elikus and the world. Now that decree, that separation was nullified, was canceled. Hashem unites himself with the Yidden and through that also with the, the world itself. And that, of course, brings the greatest, greatest Simcha. Says the Rebbe, now let's go back to understand a little bit deeper the idea of the kvater by the bris and how it's all connected to the idea of the unterfeer by the chasana. Because this idea that Hashem becomes one with the Yidin by Matan Torah, the real place of expression is specifically by the bris milah. Because what's the idea of a bris? Hashem's covenant in the flesh of the Yid forever, a covenant forever, a bris oilam. That means the whole Chiddush of Matan Torah, which is connecting Ruchnis and Gashmis, and Likus with the world, comes out in a very revealed way by the Bris Mila. This is also why the Alter Rebbe tells us in Shulchan Aruch that it's by the Bris that the Neshama starts entering the body. And therefore, just like by Achos and Kala, we said the idea of Unterfeder is to bring them closer to each other, in a similar way is by the Bris, which this is the union between Hashem and Bnei Yisroel. Hashem really coming inside of the Yid, we have also this idea of the Kvater, Again, a man and a woman, because just like by the unterfeer, 
By Martin Torah, we said, there is bringing Hashem closer to the, to the world and bringing to the Bnei Yisrael and Bnei Yisrael up to Hashem. There's the Shushvin, the Unterfer from Hashem's side and the Unterfer from the Yidin side, Moshe and Aaron, as we said, in a similar way by the Bris, when Hashem is coming together with Bnei Yisrael, becoming one with Bnei Yisrael, here too we have the man and woman, like the Kvatas, similar to the idea of the Unterfers. The Rebbe says, this also explains the tremendous Simcha that we have by a Bris. Similar to by Hasana, we have a tremendous simcha. We don't find the simcha that we have by Abris, we don't find by other mitzvahs. Because again, the simcha is because of the tremendous chiddush that's happening. Just like by the Hasana, you have the idea of the husband and wife becoming one. By the bris, you have this inner chibur, this inner connection happening between Hashem and Bnei Yisroel. And the Rebbe concludes that by fulfilling these mitzvahs, the mitzvah of Hasana, the mitzvah of bris, through this we're going to be Zoycha to Mashiach. The time which we're going to have the ultimate bris of Umal Hashem is Hashem is going to circumcise our hearts. And the chasen of Hashem with Bnei Yisrael and the unterfers will be once again Moshe and Aaron.